So this is a public service announcement to build everything from uh, source all the time. This is a case study in fear. And if that sounds like clickbait, it probably is actually a clickbait. Or let me put it another way, I hope it's clickbait, okay? Because it might not be. Um, this is actually something that bit my team three weeks ago, and I thought I, it was worth coming down and, and giving everyone a little public service announcement about this. Um, in a truly terrifying talk a few years back, Titus Winters uh, discussed the difficulties in maintaining API and ABI compatibility in a large code base over a long period of time and all the horrifying ways that seemingly innocent changes can break everything. Um, it's a detailed uh, talk, very abstract, lots of, of kind of lower gut C++ stuff. And it's easy for, I think, a lot of people, well, programmers will just ignore it. And other people might not ignore it, but even team leads, it's like, ah, that's just the Google guys have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that. But I'm here to tell you that we all have to worry about this. So... Um, uh oh, my slides are not advancing. Oh no. Uh oh, hang on. Ah, there we go. Okay, good. We're all the same. All right. So this is the simplest example I could come up with. Um, you've got a header file with an inline function that has an assert statement in it, right? So compiled in debug mode, this stops the program. Compiled in release mode, that assert goes away and it does nothing, right? So we include this into a couple of implementation files, right, which both call it or do something with it. We then link them into object files, but in one case we link it in debug mode, in the other case we link it in release mode. And then when we link these together, we get something that should only really be called ODR violation.exe, okay? This is undefined behavior rising from the depths. And if I had more time, we would be putting in some JAWS music at this point, all right? Now, the solution to this kind of thing, and that's just the simplest case, there's much more uh, worrying and subtle ways that that kind of thing can happen. So uh, Titus's advice, very strongly stated at the time, was to build everything from source with the same flags at the same time if possible. And he jumps up and down about that point a little bit. Um, and so, again, if that seems like it's kind of an abstract thing, oh, it doesn't happen to me, we don't have these problems. But honestly, it's not, okay? And you can end up with extraordinarily strange bugs that are very difficult to track down, and it happened to us. So for one brave team here at SciTech, the nightmare was just beginning, and this is our story. Very, very condensed. So we have an extremely legacy system. It's a legacy in every way, shape, or form. Some of the code is decades old. We've got Fortran 77. We've got old KNR style C, where the function arguments didn't have types. <coughs> it runs on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 servers. So all the dependencies for the thing come in as RPM files, right? Red Hat Package Manager files. These are what you install to put stuff in the operating system. And it turns out that we use uh, something called the HDF5 file format. It's a very sophisticated way of packing data into files. Um, it's an open source project. It's very common in my industry. It's curated by, uh, there's a whole group to curate this and to, to develop it and all this. And in our case, for reasons that are lost in time, um, we have a custom version of that RPM. We've got a custom built RPM. Built, we know not when, we know not where, we know not now. Uh, how or why or wherefore this RPM was built, but it has to go along with the rest of the system or nothing works, okay? Which is fine until it's time to upgrade the compiler, all right? The system compiler on uh, Red Hat 7 is GCC 485. We're upgrading to nine. Um, Red Hat says that everything ought to be compatible if you stick in C++ 11 mode. And the good news is that we were successful with very little work. We recompiled everything with the new compiler, Deployed it, did our usual round of testing, everything looked great. Until we let it run for a couple of days and every now and then one of our HDF5 files was garbage. And so this is where the nightmare begins. Did the compiler expose a latent bug in the code? By the way, this thing is 500,000 lines of code and we got it from another company. So like most of that code we've never even looked at. So how hard is it gonna be to find this? Are we gonna be hunting through the code for undefined behavior for weeks, uh, up late staring into debuggers, right? Well, uh, 
I decided because I had heard Titus's talk uh, to be a coward and say, well, let's just try recompiling that old HDF5 RPM with our new compiler to see what happens and hope it fixes things and hope we don't have to spend months tracking this down. Now that actually worked, okay? Rebuilding the custom RPM with a new compiler and some correct settings, that's a point. That solved the problem, everything's fine now. Here's the issue, the HDF5 library has two mutually incompatible build modes. Normal is single threaded only, but it's got C++ bindings that work. Or you can build it in thread safe mode, which means that you can use it in a multi-threaded program, but it breaks the C++ bindings. Um, there is a third mode that's called, it's supposed to give you both of these at the same time, but as far as we can tell, it just crashes. So the point is, is that we specifically needed a library built with GCC9 and enabled thread safe. Building it with the old compiler and enabled thread safe didn't work. I'm not come, trying to come down on the HDF5 group for this. It's an open source library. Um, it's the way it's evolved. They don't have the resources to uh, to clean this up, and it's open source, so you know packages are welcome. Now, at the time we reached this conclusion, which might be the, the clickbait, that all pre-built HDF5 libraries are broken for someone. But this is true, given that there's two incompatible ways to build it. If you manage to get one that isn't the way that you expect it to be. Your stuff is going to break, and it may break in very strange and hard to diagnose uh, ways. So again, build everything from source with the same flags at the same time, if possible, possibly including your open source dependencies. And that's the thing that's really scary. Because how many open source libraries do you use? Do you know how they were built? Do you know if you can build with exactly the same build flags in exactly the same environment as all of those dependencies? Because remember, even C has inline functions, right? So this isn't just C++ libraries. Are you safe? Are you sure you're safe? Keep watching the skies. This has been a public service announcement to build all your dependencies from scratch, from source, with the same build flags all the time. Thank you.